What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast, back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak, and we have a special guest on the show, former Cal linebacker and eight-year NFL linebacker, Desmond Bishop. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Desmond. Uh, my um, for those of you that don't know, Desmond played his college ball at Cal and led the Pac-10 in tackles in 2006. He would be drafted by the Green Bay Packers in 07 and would play eight years in the NFL, including recovering a big fumble in Super Bowl 45. Let's start at the beginning, Desmond. You attended Fairfield High School in California, uh, lettering in football and basketball. Um, in your high school days, did you have going pro uh, in your thoughts at that age, or were you just enjoying sports? Um, honestly, I, I didn't really, I didn't really think of it. Uh, I don't think on the conscious level, I didn't think about uh, making it to the NFL. Um, I just, I just loved playing, and I figured I'd play until I couldn't anymore. And so I played high school, and you know, I played junior varsity. Next was next varsity, next was college. All right, what's next after the NFL? So if it was another league after the NFL, I'd, I'd be trying to play in that too. So That's I was awesome. really just, just trying to play as long as I could. That's cool. So, and, uh... I heard that I I read somewhere that uh, growing up one of your, one of your idols in football was Lee Woodall, Niners linebacker. Yeah, 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 Lee Woodall. He um um, and that's why I do a lot of I do charity stuff because you never know how you can impact you know a kid. But Lee Woodall um impacted me because he played for the Niners when I was a kid, and he did like a signing um in, in my community, and from then on I just kind of watched him and. Um, so that was, I looked up to him more so from a, um, just like a good person standpoint, and then football was kind of secondary. Damn, that's very cool. Um, you would attend City College of San Francisco in 2003 and 2004. What was your college recruitment like, uh, coming out of high school, and what led to you attending San Francisco? Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a scholarship, so, uh, it was kind of one of my only options. Uh, Reno kind of backed out of uh, giving me a scholarship, so I, uh, I, um, you know, I had to figure out something. And, and since I knew I had to go the JUCO route, I uh, picked the best one to go to. And yeah. My dad played for the coach, so it was an easy connection. That's awesome, and yeah, you would have tons of su- uh, success there, uh, winning the un- going undefeated, winning the national championship in two thousand three. You would rank fourth best community college player in the nation and were voted California's 2004 Junior College Defensive Player of the Year, as well as the Northern California Conference Defensive MVP. Um, in 2005, you would transfer to the University of Cal the year after Aaron Rodgers left, and you're joining uh, teammates running back Marshawn Lynch and wide receiver Deshaun Jackson. What was it like playing with those, those guys at Cal? Shirts and the shirt, 
and not what you can do, you know, with the pads on, with live rounds, and, you know, having to think on the go and making adjustments and having competitive greatness and all those, those things I think is more important than just what you run in the 40. Um, none of those things were, could, could really be evaluated. There's no algorithm for that stuff. So um, I was kind of, I felt like the odd man out in, in the whole combine and draft process. And uh, so I was frustrated, honestly. And uh, but once I got drafted, all that stuff went away because at the end of the day, it, all, it ended up coming down to the things that I put value in anyway, um, leadership and um, hunger and competitive, all those things, all those qualities is what um, what made me stick around longer than my counterparts. That's awesome, yeah. And the one good thing about getting drafted later, it gives you a tremendous chip on the shoulder once you get there. Um, very, very true. Were you excited to go to Green Bay and the, the story tradition with the Packers? Yeah, I was. Um, I, when, I first, when I first went there, I kind of had to look it up and do a little bit of research. And I was quick in my research, I realized who I, was, who I was researching, and I realized all of the tradition behind it, and, and my, my excitement definitely grew, for sure. That's awesome. Um, and then your rookie season, you had played in 10 games. Um, what was it like getting adjusted to the NFL game? Was there a learning curve going from the Pac-10 to the NFL, or did you feel like you fit in pretty well? I feel like I, I fit in pretty well. Uh, I think it was a lot to do with just my mindset. You know, like I said, you play junior varsity, what's next varsity? You just go to whatever the next um, the next level is. And uh, I think it helped me um, in practice, you know, going against guys like Marshawn Lynch and Justin Forsett and mm -hmm. uh, Craig Stevens. And, you know, you got many, many, many multiple uh, guys play in the NFL. So I was kind of used to playing, you know, practicing at a high level already. So, so okay. I know the NFL is a little bit different, but, yeah, that's what's up. Um, and then you got some good experience in the playoffs your rookie year. Got to play in the 2007 NFC Championship game, which is one of my favorite games ever. A great battle that went into overtime. What was it like playing in that incredible atmosphere as a rookie? It was amazing. Um, and I, I definitely got kind of spoiled out, man. It's going to always be like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would I would, uh, I would my mindset was just contributing. I, I think I played, you know, mostly on special teams, but I just was trying to do as much as I can to maximize my opportunities and, and do the best I could to help uh, the team be successful. Yeah, awesome. Um, then in 2008, you had played 15 games. Starting one of them, you'd record 35 tackles, three forced fumbles, and a sack. The team would struggle in Aaron Rodgers' first season as starting quarterback, going 6-10. and 10. Do you think that all of the Brett Favre retirement, unretirement drama wore on the team a little bit to start the year? Um, maybe a little bit, but I, I don't know if it affected, uh, I don't know if it affected the game too much. Yeah. And I think, you know, just having a, a young quarterback and first-time starter and trying to get him acclimated to coach the way, you know, the, the, the different dynamic, I think that was, you know, just what it was. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Then in 2009, you'd play in all 16 games, recording 31 tackles and a fumble recovery. Uh, the Packers would go 11 and 5 and lose a shootout in the wild card round of the Cardinals, 51-45 in overtime. You would play in that playoff game and record four tackles. Another wild playoff game you were a part of. What do you remember most about that game in Arizona? <laughs> I, remember, I remember it just being a shootout, you know, I remember, uh, and I remember thinking, like, because I, I remember we played Arizona, like, maybe two or three times that year, mm -hmm. and uh, I was thinking, like, man, this is almost like a conference game, I feel like we know each other so well that this game is going to be very competitive, and, and we kind of, like, all knew that it was going to be competitive, and, and, it, and it went down to the wire. Yeah, that was an incredible game, and you... You started to see Aaron Rodgers' greatness when the team fell behind early, and Aaron Rodgers showed his potential of being able to bring the team back in that game. That was an incredible game. Um, yeah. In 2010, you would play in 15 games, starting 12 of them due to Nick Barnett's season-ending wrist injury. You would record 103 tackles, three sacks, and your only career interception 
which happened to be a pick six off of your former teammate and all-time great quarterback Brett Favre, then with the Vikings. Uh, you had to enjoy that pick six off of Favre, huh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, what, what better way to, um, to enjoy that than to have that moment with the Vikings? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, Packers will go 10-6 and six and sneak into the playoffs with a Week 17 win over the Bears. Um, in the wild card round against the Eagles, you would record four tackles, a tackle for loss, and a sack on quarterback Michael Vick. Did it mean a little extra to get a sack for you on Michael Vick, or was it another, just another day at the office for you? No, nah, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was big for me, you know, uh, to be able to get the Yeah, 
That's a really good answer. I like it. Um, good perspective. Now, you would start and play in Super Bowl 45 against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You'd record eight tackles, three tackles for loss, and a big fumble recovery late in the game. What a performance on the NFL's biggest stage. Um, what was that experience like playing in that on that stage in that huge game? Um, it was great. It was it was surreal, and it's it's, it's kind of uh, I still I still need a couple more years, I think, maybe to really recognize uh, what exactly you know kind of took place. But for me, um, I felt like it was just a natural progression. You know, almost like going from JV to varsity to college. It was like all right. From going to you know being a special team player, eventually I'm gonna be a starter. Yeah. Um, you know, eventually I'll be a Pro Bowl. Eventually I'll be in a Hall of Fame. But I don't think about it. It's just whatever the next progression is. So it was like, oh, we went to the you know we went to the NFC like the playoffs like the year before. Like I said that because I truly believe I'm like, oh, next year if I'm starting, we'll win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. That's and awesome. it so happened, and it happened, and not that I'm I was the guy that helped win the Super Bowl. It's just that's, that was my mindset, whether I was going to win it or not. Like, it was, I was always just going to get better. Mm-hmm. And I think, and that as we, as, I don't even know the questions you have going forward, but if, if that's my mindset, so it was like I had so much more to do in, in terms of, all right, let me, you know, let me play enough, let me start enough so I can make enough tackles to be considered one of the best, to be the pro bowler, to be, to be all of the things that, you know, I subconsciously wanted. So when it got cut short for me, like that, that, that was that was hurtful because it was like, oh man, like I can do it. Like I was going to do it. Like it wasn't even a matter of, oh, I needed to just work out. It was just like it wasn't even a question. It was like, what's next? Yeah. So, um, so anyway, I kind of went off tangent just to say that I, I never really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. I think you have to have that kind of mentality to be a successful athlete. You always have to be like, self belief has to be a hundred percent. You have to believe that. Sure. No matter what is thrown at me, I'm going to overcome it. And, you know, sometimes the mentally you're there and the body doesn't hold up and you play, in, you know, the most physical sport out there. So, you know, sometimes shit happens. Um, on uh, January 4, 2011, the Packers would sign you to a four-year deal. The Packers would dominate in 2011 going 15-1. and one. And uh, you would play and start in 13 games that season, recording 115 tackles, five sacks, 10 tackles for loss, and two forced fumbles on the year. Uh, the season didn't end the way you guys wanted to, losing to the Giants in the divisional round. But again, you played well in the in the playoff game, recording five tackles, two tackles for loss. Um, I remember, you know, I saw something where you were saying you were ready to take that next step. You felt like you were ready to be the Ray Lewis linebacker leader for that Packers defense. Yeah, I mean, because it was, it's, it's the, I was just going off of uh, my belief and then just evidence. Mm-hmm. Right? You said my junior year, I had, I, I, and, um, and uh, at Cal, I had 89 tackles. The next year, I had 106. So all my stats went up, right? Yeah. You know, my first year started, I had 103. Next year started, I had 115. Next, the next, and I started 13 games. I guarantee you that next year, I would have started a minimum of 14. I would have had more tackles, more sacks, more. It wasn't even a. It wasn't even a question. Like it wasn't even a. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I was just going off the evidence. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Check my check my my my, my junior year in high school versus my senior year, and you know check. That was just my experience. Yeah. So it was like, I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to take the next step. I was Pro Bowl alternate. Okay, this year I'll be the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Like it was, nothing was going to stop me from doing that but injury. You know, it, it was out of my control, you know? Yeah, I feel... <laughs> I fully believe that, too. I think if you get, you know, a season with 16 games where you start and, you know, it wasn't that you couldn't do it because it's very evident. You were a great linebacker, a sure tackler, making, you know, plays in all the biggest games, but injuries caught up, uh, a major hamstring injury in preseason of 2012. You placed on IR and missed the entire season, and then the Packers would release you in June of 2013. Which was still pretty surprising to me, considering the amount of production that you had while with the team. And uh, a lot of people, 
a lot of fans like to side with ownership on these contracts, like, oh, the player didn't hold up his end of the deal. The Packers, you're signing you to a four-year deal and cut you two years into it. You know, it's it's a two-way two, two, two way street, and uh, the owners and the teams don't always uh, honor those contracts either. Right. So that's frustrating. Yeah, that's what I go back to telling you. Like, it's a business at the end of the day. Um, and that's what it is. You got, you got to take care of your business. Yeah. Like, uh, like Marshawn said, you got to take care of your mentals and your chicken. That's, yeah. That was, that was some, that was some brilliant. That was brilliant. He was telling you something that was brilliant. Yeah. And now it's just up to you to, to pick it up. You yeah. know, because there's a lot of people who you think is smart dress in a suit or play in the league a long time and you assume that they know and, and they don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um yeah as far as as far as the release from the Packers, I mean honestly to this day I'm I'm still I wanna um one day I wanna uh, talk to um I don't even know whose decision it was, but I, I would like to hear because I'm a coach now so mm-hmm. I coach that cow. Um but I I I, uh, so I sat in rooms and we talked about, you know, our players and, you know, like what we think and blah, blah, blah. And I, I still, to this day, I wonder the conversation that started when they went up and Ted Thompson and Mark and McCarthy, they were all sitting around a round table and all right, Desmond Bishop, what are we going to do? Like, I want to know what, I want to know the jury process. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, what did you all say? Like, what was the final thing? Like, yeah, all right, we're just going to let him go. Um, because from anybody who can see and then myself obviously I'm, I'm biased with myself but even the fans can tell like that there's something about that cut it didn't it, didn't, it wasn't right yep. I mean it wasn't it said it wasn't right and it's they can, they're the owners and whatever they can do what they want to do it's right in that sense but it's not it wasn't the if you're trying to win a Super Bowl wouldn't you want the best players to do so yeah so why like how can you not see the like y'all not dumb, like the fans who barely know football saw that. So how did what did y'all know that we didn't know? So I'm like, what did they know about me that I didn't know? Yeah. That's why I'm for McCarthy. What did y'all know? Like what is what was it? Did y'all know like I was gonna like, you know, get injured again? Because my injuries wasn't like I was just running and somebody, you know, I, I tripped over a you know, a pothole and twisted my knee. Someone act, it was like a, it was a fluke. Like someone tackled and I felt I got caught in their pile. You know, bam. And then the next time I got hurt, somebody was trying to cut somebody else and I was in a way and they rolled into my knee. Like that, that, that's like not my body breaking down. That's like the game, you know, mm-hmm. just unfortunate situations. It wasn't my body. I was good. I was healthy. I was fine. So, um, you know, so that this is such like, oh, maybe he was, he was hurt and he was breaking down. No, that wasn't it. So if we know that that wasn't it, my body wasn't breaking down, what was McCarthy, what was y'all's, like, what was the, what was it? Like, yeah, he's not good enough. Like, he ain't going to, you know, he ain't going to come back from his injury. Or, and even if even if you thought that most times, right, a franchise, if you got a, a high-caliber player, if he gets hurt, you still keep him at least give him one year to figure it out. Yeah. And, I've been, and I've been paying attention because I want to see the same exact scenario. And when Bowman got hurt the second time, they still didn't cut him. I was like, damn, all right, they must have got a different idea. I'm still looking for that scenario. But yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. so, so y'all get the business mind on that one. I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, there is a little bit of in Green Bay, like a uh, uh, get rid of a you know a player and don't replace them. Like getting rid of uh, Jordy Nelson and they don't replace him. Getting rid of Randall Cobb and they don't replace him and stuff like that. It's it's a little surprising, some of that. And uh, it's got to be tough. You know, you think from a fan uh, viewpoint, cutting a multiple one hundred tackler player. You know, it's an interesting move, but. I hope one day you you uh, hear that and give some. I know you did. Yeah. I, I think I think I know. I think I know. Um. I think I know. You want to you want to hear why I think this so? Why I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think in order to the, the tangibles that are important can't be measured. Yeah. Like my idea that next year I'll get more tackles. Like it's no. That's between me and me. So it's no way. It, it could be measured or quantified. 
quantified and looked at on a spreadsheet so you can kind of see it, you know? Mm-hmm. So now it's, it's, it's put up to a, a human bias. You know what I mean? So now it's stacked up against, you know, maybe uh, the, the idea of Brad Jones is better because he's taller, maybe faster, he looks stronger, he, he got muscles when he runs, you know what I mean? So now it's, it's human bias, but, but what I, the tangible that I have, you can't measure it, but it's, it's the best thing. It's what I, what I believe the good players have. Yeah. And, um, and the only way you really can decipher that in a player is if you were a player too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I you think... know, in a tough game, I look to my right like, oh, this motherfucker is good. He is. You, you, that's the only time you can you can measure it. So if you never play, there's no way you can dodge something that, you know, like that. Yeah, and I agree. I think there should be more uh, former players uh, in management positions. They're better talent evaluators. They're better at seeing that kind of stuff. And that experience could help you as far as coaching and talent evaluation going forward. If that's, that's what you want to do. And I'm a coach, and, I'm a coach and, you know, to the NFL, coaching NFL and the, yeah. and the, uh, and the, and the in college. There's so much politics and, you know, it's brother-in-law and all that stuff. And, yeah. And that's why, you know, so I don't really, I don't have the patience to deal with all of that stuff. But just on a coaching level, I feel like, I, that's why, you know, I, I took over a program that was trash. But I, we, 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 won a, we won a conference champion twice, went to the second round playoff twice. With, um, and it's because we can, all of our coaches play, so we can tell them things as coaches that if you've never played, you just don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and that gives you a, 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 a advantage over the competition. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe that. I, I agree with you 100% on that. Um, so a few short stints with the Cardinals, Niners, Redskins, and, uh, you know, you look at it like, you know, it's a, you didn't get to live out your career as long as you wanted to and become as good as you wanted to be in. All that, but if you look at it, man, eight year career, a hell of a career. You'd play in 75 career games, record over 300 tackles, 17 tackles for loss, nine sacks, seven forced fumbles, and that pick six of a Brett Favre. Hell of a career. Looking back on it, what do you want to be remembered for most in your NFL playing career? Uh, honestly, uh, Honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't care. Like, I don't care what, uh, I don't care. I, I, I don't care what anyone thinks. Like, just think what you think. I, whatever it is, if you know, good, an underachiever, overachiever, bad player, or slow, whatever it is, I respect your perspective. But your perspective, like, it don't matter. It ain't. Like, I don't, I don't really care. It doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to me. But, because I think the people who know, you know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The people who watch, the people who know, we know. Like, so it ain't, it doesn't matter. Can you still take pride in your eight-year career, regardless of the way it ended? Oh, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course, of course. Um, um, yeah, of course. Like, without, without question, I think, uh, you know, I, I achieved, I, I did something that uh, very few could, could do. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, so I definitely, I think if I, if I, if I didn't take pride in it, I'd be doing a disservice to, you know, all of the people who, who, who fell short somehow. Yeah. Um, I'm doing them a disservice. So now I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, that's awesome. Who, uh, one more question. Who, what coach along the way do you think, uh, do you credit with helping impact your game and getting you to be the best player you could be the most? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's the most, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think I think all my coaches had um, some kind of uh, effect on me to help me become like a total player. You mm-hmm. know, I think that's. Um, but but yes, yeah, so I couldn't I couldn't say the most, but um, just people just different. Like once your mom he gave you the freedom to, um, you know, what I mean, to just to be a creator. Just like he didn't hold you in a, a system and play a certain type of way. He gave you freedom to to do what you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think my dad being, being, you know, demanding like the best out of me, like 
you know, forcing myself to, you know, try to be better. Um, you know, my defensive coordinator at Cal, uh, Coach Gregory, Will Cox, like everybody had like a certain, you know, a certain impact, and it all it all kind of pieced together. That's awesome. Um, all right, well, thanks so much for some of your time, Desmond. It was great talking some football with you, hearing some perspective, and talking about your great career. Uh, uh, I just want to say it was an honor to have you on the show, and uh, I want to thank you for like laying your body and mental on the line for the entertainment of fans and playing the game the right way and always with maximum effort. Yeah, no problem. All right, thanks for coming on the show, and have a good one, Desmond. All right, All right thank you. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, have a great week, guys. We'll be back with more episodes. Peace out.